not just to be watched, it's to be experienced. I was ballet trained for a long time, and then when modern dance came into my life, I felt, oh yes, I can roll on the floor and be human, I don't have to be a prince, and, and yeah, but ballet is still my basic. And when I teach a ballet class, I focus on dynamics. So I guess I sort of choreograph in class when I'm, when I'm doing a ballet class. And when I work with ballet dancers in a modern dance class, to get them to be, well, to use their soul, to, to have that sensory um, awareness that they might not use in a ballet class where they go from position to position. Of course, you would hope that they would still have that sensory perception, but it's easier to hide behind that codified language that we have done for however many decades and have in our bodies. So that when you need to open up to a new movement language, you might be able to access that sensory perception more readily. I love teaching. I love teaching kids, I love teaching adults, and the most wonderful thing for me is when I work with professionals and I and then have the feedback of them experiencing movement in a new way. When I get that feedback from professionals, that is exactly what I'm after. Where I, I break patterns and have that soulfulness, that inner joy, where movement is an expression of body and soul. That's what I'm after, in general. I feel like I'm inspired by so many completely different things. And thinking back on the program, the two by two, the different duets, where I challenged myself in a way to give different experiences, but it's also reflective of how I experience my environment. The different pas de deux in the last project, I, th I think show a scope on how I approach movement and what inspires me. That, for example, in the piece Borders that I do with Temple is really a relationship and it is movement-based. There's a trust and it's a, it's a relationship between two people who might not have to say that much to each other anymore, who come together again. And of course there are other pieces that are a response to music where I correspond with the music. Not, I hope not mimic it. You know, I work with composers Ricardo Yorca, Beata Moon, Leslie Wildman, and in Sarau that Matt and Aaron did, Ricardo in his music sort of deconstructs a sonata form in a Scarlatti sonata and, and puts his own spin on it. And I use a classical vocabulary and respond to the music and use syncopation and, and deconstruct form. Hopefully can recognize parts that are very much a traditional pas de deux and then things well, that are twisted and that are that you haven't seen before. And so it goes on and on. I mean, I can be inspired by movement of animals, sometimes music, sometimes it's a concept. Because I'm inspired by different things, the process is thankfully not the same. So each time the process when I get into the studio is very much different for me. Sometimes I really know what I want, I have an idea, and sometimes, sometimes it's a dancer who inspires me and it's like, what can you do? Some pieces work with certain dancers and then I retire them. Sometimes when I bring, in a, bring back a piece, I have to adjust a couple of steps for, for a new dancer, but the idea is still the same. I mean, Caves is an older piece that um, Temple did uh, with Lloyd and originally was done for Andrea Long, who had been with City Ballet and then was a prima ballerina up at Dance Theatre of Harlem. And there was just a, a sexuality, a sensuality, you know, that she was able to transform herself into this spider, into this insect. And Temple has sensory perception. She's just so ready, so, but makes it her own. And she has that femme fatale quality and you know and kills kills that fly or kills a boy or um so it really that is it is the most story like of my ballets and usually i let an audience come to the piece 
So even if I have a full experience as a performer or I have a clear idea of what I want as a choreographer, it sets an atmosphere, but it's not necessarily a story that you go from point A to point B. There is an atmosphere that I can create on stage. And that can be different every time, but I make it alive. I live it, and that gives you, hopefully, as an audience member, a full experience. In a lot of my work, even though it comes from, is inspired by different things, that this sensory perception is a sensory participation of, an, of the audience. If you get out of your seat after the show and feel like skipping, <laughs> that would be just wonderful, you know? I think my choreography is, is, a, is really connected to the performance element of it, to make it come alive. I, I think I'm probably best at, at expressing relationships, um, at least that's what I'm interested in right now.